Yeah, let's start by taking a look at the results from the previous run. So as we can see, oh, it finished after approximately four minutes. As we can see, yeah, the loss looks nice. It goes down. So you can see for the different epochs, the loss continually goes down. Maybe training a little bit longer would have been nice because we can see there's still a trend here, but overall that looks pretty good. And then also when we compute the accuracy, yeah, we get a good accuracy here. Now let me show you how I would yeah, organize my code if I work on a bigger project where I do more tuning. So what I like to do is I like to do, or well, like to use um, Py scripts for that. So if I have a folder here, I have usually multiple files, one helper.py file, sometimes also multiple helper files, where I keep functions that I want to reuse yeah, across different projects, but also if I have multiple models, I keep like general functions in there. For example, computing the accuracy would be such a function. And I also have a settings file with yeah, model settings and hyperparameter settings and so forth. And then the main train model file, which is yeah, used for training the model. So let's open them and take a look. So I'm opening them here in Visual Studio Code. What I really like about Visual Studio Code is that it's fast and also it shows me if I make errors, for example. So if I, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say I make a typo here, I type FLSE, instead of false, it would tell me an undefined name. So it's quite smart. It will find out if I have something that is not defined. So that's what I like about it. So it's easy to quickly find typos to yeah, debug your code. So starting with, let's say starting with a train model file. So the train model file here is um, importing from the helper file. So there are general functions like I mentioned. So I'm importing the data loaders um, and functions for setting the random seeds and making everything deterministic. I'm, this is something I'm using in many different projects. So I'm keeping this in my general file and also things like computing the accuracy and plotting the training loss and accuracy and so forth. So that's something I like to reuse in other projects or if I have multiple train model files, let's say train model uh, MLP1 and train model MLP2 and so forth, I can reuse that code. I don't have to copy and paste it every time. Um, other things here is um, I'm also setting it up such that it, yeah, that it can read command line arguments. I will show you how to run this in a second. But here, for example, I'm setting it up with this argument parser that it accepts one argument called settings.path and one results.path. So here, this is where it finds the hyperparameter settings and model settings. And here's where it's putting the log files and results from that run. So my settings file, I'm using YAML. So YAML is, a, I think it stands for yet another markdown language or mark, uh, markup language. So what that means, it's just a simple way of, of writing a text file that is human readable. So here's my YAML file. And there's actually a Python library called PyYAML, which lets you load these YAML files. I'm doing it here. So if I'm loading it like this, um, then settings will be a Python dictionary. So it's loading the YAML file into a Python dictionary that I can use. So why am I doing that? It's just for organizing things. So I could, for example, have multiple settings files and each one has a different hyperparameter setting and then I can yeah, keep everything organized by having these files. Um, but of course you can always uh, put everything, I could put the settings also, instead of using the YAML file, I could, of course, also write a uh, Python dictionary here. And then, yeah, you would have to add the strings and then the commas and so forth. So you could also, of course, do, do that. But if you have bigger projects, it might be helpful to organize things this way because then you have maybe multiple settings files that you want to set up and run in parallel or something like that. Um, here, I'm using a trick so to, uh, how can I say that? So usually I like to print things to the command line when I run my script, but also I want to keep a record of it later on that I can take a look at. So here 
this is like a trick so that you can see the output on the command line, but also it will be written to a file. So everything I print, this will also be written to a file called training.log, which will be in the results path. So I'm going over this rather quickly, but if you have any questions, let me know. Also, this is nothing you have to know for the exam or anything. I'm just showing it to you and sharing it with you because I think it could be helpful for your project. If you are using Google Colab, it's maybe easier to have everything in a single notebook. But I think in general, if you are organizing yeah, your projects on your computer, it might be helpful also sometimes to use these scripts files before you run them on in a notebook. So, yeah, so going down here, just printing some output for logging purposes. Um, then I'm using my set deterministic function from my helper file that I imported earlier. This makes my code run deterministically. That means if I run it again, I will get exactly the same results. There are also the data loaders I'm loading here. So it's, I think, more convenient because it's a lot of code to put this into a separate file if I go here again. So the data loader, I think I put it on the bottom here. It's actually a pretty big uh, code chunk. So I'm just writing it here and then reuse that in my different projects when I use MNIST. So I don't have to always put all the code into this file. I just have to copy and paste my helper file. All right, so here, this is now how I provide the hyperparameters because settings is a dictionary. It has the dictionary entries corresponding to these entries here. So there's a batch size. So I'm passing, so I'm not hard coding these values. They are all read from the settings files. So if I change my settings files, I don't have to, I never have to modify train model. So I never have to really touch that. I can yeah, do a hyperparameter tuning by just changing this only, this one single file. All right, so then there's my multi-layer perceptron here. Um, just the regular training I'm using a different, uh, I use Adam here, I just see. I could also use SGD, we will be, talking about Adam in a future lecture. It's like a slightly improved version of SSGG. Yeah, and then this is just the whole code I used also in the previous um, notebooks. And then, yeah, I have a plotting function for plotting the loss and the accuracy. Again, you don't have to know all these details. Uh, it's just, you can copy and paste that from my code. It's uh, usually just something, yeah, it's, uh, it's more like software engineering at that point. Um, yeah, I also just for bookkeeping, I create a results dictionary. So here I keep the training accuracies, the validation accuracies, um, the final test set accuracy, and also the settings for also bookkeeping. So if I want to look that up later, I have a record of that. So for example, let's say you run your model, but later on you decide you want to make some uh, different plots. This way you don't have to rerun your model, you have all your data here. And I'm saving that to a YAML file. All right, so let's uh, run this then and see how it uh, works. So here I'm in this folder, and if I want to run this, I type python train model.py, and then remember there are two arguments. I can maybe try to run it without, it should complain. Yeah, it says uh, following arguments are required, settings path and results path. So just to show you, let me show you the results. You can see it's empty right now. Now I'm uh, executing it, Python train model and giving it the settings path, uh, just called it settings.yaml. So this is just this file here and then results path just call it results. So then it's running. And you can see while it is running, it's putting things here, but it's already also putting a log file here. So you can either check the command line here, or you can already, if you don't have, let's say if you are on the server and you don't have a stable connection and this gets interrupted, then you still have this log file here. Okay, that's already finished, that was uh, pretty quick. So now everything we have seen is in this log file here as well. So just for records, for future record, if you close this session here, you will have it still available. Uh, then we have our plots here that we generated. So this is um, a slightly fancier version of yeah the mini batch loss. So here I'm computing the uh, 
running average. And yeah, this is um, on the left hand side, the training and validation accuracy for the different epochs, for the 10 epochs. Yeah, and uh, I have that now for my records and I also have this results dictionary if I want to create new plots. So this is also a YAML file with the uh, settings, the final test set accuracy, um, the training accuracies and validation accuracies. Of course, if you have, uh, let's say you have a Jupyter notebook, you it's sometimes more convenient, for example, if you on Google Colab, to have everything in a single file, but there is also a way you can do a hybrid of that. So if I go into this directory, let me just create a new Jupyter notebook. For example, like here, it's a new Jupyter notebook. I can also, I maybe don't have to use a YAML file, but I could also, oops, I close these files, one second. I could also import from my helper file. So. When I have, for example, here these um, imports from helper.import, I can do the same thing also with my Jupyter notebooks. I can also import here, see? So only the only thing I have to do is I have to have the helper file in the same folder as the Jupyter notebook. But that way you can keep your Jupyter notebooks rather small. You don't have to make them huge. So you can technically, you could also copy and paste this. You have to make some modifications because uh, we don't have these arguments, but we could say, say um, uh, yeah, arcs result path. Um, yeah, the problem would be we, we, had to, we would have to change this one to um, result path. We could do it like this. And then let's say results and then um, settings. Like this, and then we have to remove this arc here everywhere. Oops. So how I can maybe quickly do that is by making a new text file, and then replace arc. Dot. Actually, I don't know how this works here. Okay, <laughs> I would maybe I can do that in quick more quickly here. Arcs dot just replacing every instance of arcs like this and then copying it back here. Okay. Um, yeah, that should technically work. It will probably complain. I've probably forgot something here. No, it actually works. Yeah, so we could also run the code then in the Jupyter notebook here if we wanted to. So note that we saved some space by not putting these functions from the helper functions into this notebook. So it's a little bit shorter. So this way you can also yeah take advantage of that on Google Colab. All right, so this is it for the coding examples. I will all upload them all to GitHub so you can take a closer look. And um, then we will continue with some aspects about multilayer perceptrons.